Hi everyone, and welcome to the Dodo Bird Nerd. It's me, the Dodo Bird Nerd, and in today's Pokemon video, I'm going to be doing the fifth part of my Which Pokemon Have Extinct Animal Inspiration series, this time going over Generation 5. So, without any further ado, let's roll the intro, and let's get started. So just one quick thing before I get started, all images used will be cited in the description and all works used will be linked in the description. So the first thing I do is I should go over the three categories I divide the Pokemon into based on how close they are to their extinct animal inspirations. The first is an exact match, basically the Pokemon is the best it could be at carrying the inspiration of an certain extinct animal. And then there's a close enough, basically get some aspects of an extinct animal but it's not exactly perfect. It could be a better one out there to represent that extinct animal. And lastly, there's the how category, where there is some common consensus on how it could maybe be a certain extinct animal, but I it doesn't make sense when you look into its design or whatever. It might be in some part of the name, but it just doesn't look it, mainly Dodrio. And then the two rules I have is I won't cover anything, mainly reptilian, that accidents into being a dinosaur, just due to the fact that it's reptilian, because I feel like that would be a bit too repetitive and wouldn't get anything that they went into trying to be a dinosaur. And lastly, I won't cover anything that's just a generic of a currently living animal, as that comes up in a twice in this video, where two of them are just generic ones, so I don't even have an image, because it's very generic, but the thing they are in question is extinct. So, it, yeah. And so, while, so then I think we should go on to the actual Pokemon. And there is more than last video, but still less than the Kanto video. So it's gone up a bit, but still not at a high level, especially when compared to Kanto. So the first one, as it always will be, is the Grass Starter, and this is superior with the Titana Boa. Now, the main thing they have in common is they're both big snakes with a kind of greenish color scheme. Superior is a bit more green. So this is a close enough. This is kind of just people trying to figure out where Superior is on the extinct animals for grass type starters. And this was the closest one. So it's not exactly perfect, but it is pretty, it's close enough for a Titanoboa. The next up we have Tortuga, which has the Protostega, which is a type of turtle that has gone extinct. You can definitely see some aspects of Tortuga in the Protostega, such as like the beak shape and such, but there are still some things that are wrong, like the back flippers, so I'm going to give this a close enough for being Tortuga being a Protostega. Similarly to Tortuga, but not based on the same type of ancient turtle, is Caracosta, which has the Archelon. Now, this one has, I think, is a bit less than Tortuga does, just in terms of design, because it has a few more added things in, but you can still, again, kind of see where they got Caracosta from this. So this is going to be a close enough ranking, as it, is, again, isn't exact, but you can definitely see where they're trying to go with it. Next up, we have the other pair of Unova fossils, those being Archeops and Archen, which are the Archaeopteryx. And based on the fact that Archaeopteryx is in their name, and they definitely look like an Archaeopteryx, these are an exact match for being an Archaeopteryx Pokemon. They are what you would want to go for if you wanted to have an Archaeopteryx on your team. Then we move on to the two kind of more generic ones that I don't have an image for because they're very generic. Uh, the first is the Haxorus line, which has dinosaur inspirations, just generic dinosaur inspirations. This was stated in a design interview about, ha about Haxorus, so... It kind of has to be an exact match. They were specifically going for that specifically, and they did an okay to good job on it, so I'm going to give them an exact match for that. And then the last Pokemon we have to cover is another generic one, this being Genesect. I mean, its lore specifically states it is a prehistoric insect, and that generally does have some traits of them, generally being big, but there's nothing real specific there about its design. So this is going to get more of a close enough because it has been heavily modified by technology. An original Genesect would probably get closer to an exact match. However, a more upgraded Genesect 
generally would get it close enough as it's much more technologically upgraded to the point we really can't tell which animal extinct insect it is really supposed to be based on really at all so those are the extinct animal pokemon of generation 5 while there was definitely more of them than in past videos there's still not a lot and I do want there to be more of them, and I do have a bit more confidence, though, for the remaining three generations, as I'm generally more familiar with the designs in those generations, and so I'm fairly certain we're going to see a bit more in this video than, than in this video, at least in terms of percentage, because, you know, this one had the most Pokemon, Unibet did, and Kells had the least. So it's possible that in terms of percentage, that one might be higher, but it might have less Pokemon, if that makes any sense. So, please let me know if you think there's anything else I should have covered in this video. There were some that I could have, but I ultimately decided not to just because I thought it was mainly, it was too weak for like a dinosaur inspiration. Like it was generally supposed to be a generic reptile. But if you think I should have included any of those, let me know in the comments and I might include them in a addendum video at the end of the series. So, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye!